Hi. I recently judged at the Halliday Chardonnay Cabernet Challenge in Margaret River, and it was a really brilliant opportunity for me to taste Chardonnays and Cabernets, but in this context, from all across the country. And I had a really instructive day one day where, where I looked at like 30 Adelaide Hills Chardonnays followed by 30 Mornington Peninsula Chardonnays followed by 50 Margaret River Chardonnays. And the thing that really stood out to me very clearly in that tasting was the power of the Margaret River fruit. And this is what I'm looking at today. It sort of got me thinking I need to do a Chardonnay um, expose, a tasting, not just in Margaret River, but across the country. So I'm going to do tastings from Macedon, Mornington Peninsula, Tasmania, Yarra Valley, Margaret River, and others. And we're going to dig in and have a look at what determines the differences between these regions when viewed through the lens of this most wonderful grape. So when we're in Margaret River, um, you can almost be certain that the majority of the grape wines are made either fully or predominantly with the Jinjing clone. And the problem with the Jinjing clone, apart from... Um, well, I mean, there's a few problems with it. <laughs> the biggest one, though, is the yields. They're tiny. I mean, it, the bunches themselves are tiny because it suffers from this thing called melanderage, which is basically where you get hen and chicken, a big berry and a little berry. Really good for flavor concentration and acid and phenolics. Not good for yield because you get these berries. Honestly, they're like this big. They're so small um, that they just sort of uh, give you no juice whatsoever, but brilliant for flavor. Um, so I think that whilst the best Chardonnays are made from gin gin predominantly in Margaret River, I think that in the future we're going to see more wines with an inclusion of Dijon clones, particularly 95, 96, 77, 76, because these clones yield a little bit higher and they have a real benefit uh, to the overall wine, and that is linearity, focus, precision, and levity. They're light flavoured rather than gin gin, which is powerful and dense. So these five wines are from my um, my cellar. These are wines that I put away and attempt to drink over time. I'm opening them all today. Um, in the first glass is a producer that I really love, Los Vino in Margaret River. He, um, Nick Peterkin, son of Mike Peterkin at Piero, um, and his mum is a Cullen. So he's got this gorgeous kind of heritage in his blood, but he's branched off and he's doing these really um, adventurous and kind of exploratory winemaking um um, pursuits at Los Vino and they're brilliant. I mean, he's very, very talented, but he's also adventurous and I really like that. Um, so what we're looking at here is a Chardonnay from 2019. Of course, it's wild ferment in ceramic egg. 70% of the blend went through ceramic egg. The remainder went through oak. Um, full malo, uh, which is not, not common in Margaret River. Full malo, regular batonage, 13 months maturation. Um, Wild Berry Springs Vineyard is in Willyabra, which is really kind of in the top third of the um, region between the two capes, Cape Naturalist and Cape Lewin. So after two years in bottle, it's so good. It's really concentrated and it's taut and it's linear, but the malo's given it kind of textural bedrock upon which the fruit can kind of sit. There's real oyster shell and oyster and brine's real maritime character to this wine. I love it. It's long. It's lingering. I can still taste it very, very clearly. Um, I think that his wines, I mean, they're about $80 a bottle, um, but I try and get a couple every vintage and hang on to them because I think we see, I mean, this is aging very, very, very slowly. I think it's got easily a decade or more to go um, before it hits that first kind of window of primary to secondary characters. Um, and they're just, $80 is not cheap, but it's also very good value for a premium Chardonnay, which this is. The second wine is a wine that I haven't had yet. This is a 2020 Halcyon Vineyard Chardonnay from Cy Vintners or C Vintners. And these guys are really... Um, famous for their minimal intervention both in the winery and in the vineyard. So this Halcyon Block vineyard is in Rosa Glen, so that's east of Witchcliffe. As you're driving down Bustle Highway, you go through, through Margaret River Town, you come out the other side, you keep going. Witchcliffe is this cute little town um, and Rosa Glen is east of that. So this is planted um, in 1978 on carry loam over white clay. The wine is basket pressed fermented wild in concrete eggs and matured for 12 months in French oak. It's really, really concentrated. On the table, it's the most clear of the five wines in terms of clarity. It's also the darkest. It's got a golden edge to it. It's also the lowest in alcohol at 12%. So these are very interesting things to come in combination um, on the table. Now, 
on the nose, it's really, really interesting. It's grassy and it's green, but it's it's spicy and it's savory too. So you get this kind of bison grass, lemongrass, brine. It's leafy. There's like a coriander, calantro, um, garden herb sort of character. And then you get pink and yellow grapefruit, peach, all of these sort of delicious and wonderful things. I'm all about texture in Chardonnay. I think if you miss the texture in Chardonnay, you've missed the boat because that phenolic layering and texture and grip that you get on the mid palate and through the finish is what makes it such a great wine to drink. And that, for me, is what makes Margaret River so brilliant. It's this effortless phenolic texture. And that comes directly from the ginger grapes that are grown in the area with that hen and chicken, as I was talking about before. So this has got layers of phenolic complexity in the palate. And for me, I think... There can be fruit. We talk about fruit all the time and the, and the things that the wine tastes like. We talk about the interaction between acidity and fruit, so it might be salty or briny or juicy or tangy or whatever it is. But for me, a whole other aspect of the wine that cannot be overlooked is the phenolic complexity, and this wine nails phenolic complexity. It's a little bit edgy because it's low alcohol. It's a beautiful kind of textured, layered palate, um, and it's really long. It's a really long fruited wine. I can still taste it. And that's a wonderful, wonderful sign. Um, this is a premium wine. This is $120 a bottle. But um, as I say, it's so distinct and so exciting that I would really recommend that you try and seek one out, maybe get one with a couple of friends and try it because it's a whole other side of Margaret River Chardonnay. And I love to see that. So in the middle glass, we've got a wine from a producer called Walsh and Sons. Now, Freya Honan and Ryan Walsh are the two that own this, this winery. And if Honan sounds familiar to you, good, because Freya's dad, David Honan, was one of the people that started Cape Mantell. Now, this vineyard, the Burnside Vineyard, was planted in 1981 by David Honan. It's 1.7 k's or something from the coast. Um, and Cape Mantell used this vineyard through the 80s and the 90s for their Chardonnay. They used other vineyards as well, but this, is, this made up a large portion of what they were doing at the time. And I had... Um, I had a bottle of the 2010 Cape Mentel Cabernet recently, and it was like Benjamin Button. I mean, the Cape Mentel Chardonnay is now a very rich, very ripe, I mean, that are on the market now. Um, and I think that they're stylistically a bit of a departure from what they were like in the Rob Mann era. And this 2010 Chardonnay was made at that time by um, Tim Lovett, Timmy from Lewin, the winemaker at Lewin, and a wonderful man called Simon Burnell, who's now passed away, but widely loved in Western Australia and he worked at Lew um, at Cape Mantel with Timmy and Rob at that time. So this wine had basically aged backwards. I mean, the fruit was super powerful. The acid that streamed through the wine was salty and juicy um, and it just had such beautiful concentration of fruit as this wine does. So this is now hand-picked, straight to barrel, pressed straight to barrel, wild ferment, of course, um, in 30% new French oak. There's no stirring uh, and it's left unsulfured until something like January. So let's just assume it's picked sort of February time. That's when many Chardonnays in Margaret River are picked. Left um, unsulfured until the following January until bottling. So it's, it's in oak for all of that time. Um, and that t portion of time unsulfured really gives the wine complexity and extra dimension and depth and that is what we see here so we're looking at the 2019 vintage here here and here and 2019 Margaret River was cool and wet um, but it produced wines it was very good it was not dissimilar to 17 I suppose stylistically but um, the 19 I preferred it far more and certainly um, the 19 Chardonnays are just fine minerally um, they're poised and aromatic. There's detail in them. Same with the Cabernets, but these are just such beautiful wines, and that's why I collected so many of them in that year, um, bracketed by two warm but excellent vintages, 18 and 20, 20 that we see here. Um, I don't think I mentioned, but the Burnside site, apart from being close to the ocean, is in the Wallcliff area, so other wineries in the Warcliffe area, just to orientate you, are like um, Xanadu, Stella Bella, Voyager, Lewin, that kind of thing. Those wineries all occupy part of the Warcliffe area and it's just south of the Margaret River Township and runs to the coast. Um, so a really wonderful, wonderful patch of dirt for Chardonnay, uh, one of my favourites in Margaret River. 
Moving into the fourth one, you may have never seen this one. You may never see this one, I'm not sure, unless you actually travel to Margaret River and go to the cellar door at Vass Felix. But this is part of the Black Label range. And winemaker Virginia Wilcock is incredibly talented um, and wild. She's, she's kind of like close to genius and really feels wine. She's technically blessed, but she feels wine in this emotional way and she experiments with it in that way. So these wines are never going to be labelled in the white label range, which is the Vast Felix branding. Um, these are always meant to be experimental, but they are so thrilling. And if you ever get them, just ask if they've got any to purchase because they're always interesting and exciting and engaging. And this, as you can see, is cloudy very cloudy. In fact, it was clear because it's been um, sitting very still in my cellar for about a year, but I gave it a shake. It was unceremonious actually, just a total shake and here it is. So I don't have any tech detail on this wine. I can't tell you anything about it other than I know Ginny only does wild ferment. The fruit sourcing could be from anywhere because they've got good vineyard resources at Vas Felix. Um, and, you know, maybe it's had skin ferment, ferm um, skin contact. Maybe it's been fermented in alternate vessels, eggs or concrete, or I don't know, but um, I love Chardonnay in the hands of Virginia, so I'm certain to love this wine. It's bloody awesome. It's creamy and it's briny. It's kind of tantalizing actually because it's got a core of really powerful fruit there, and that's what drives it across the palate. But it's wrapped in very soft, chalky texture, um, kind of creamy almost, uh, but it's savoury. And that's, that's the style of the house, actually. Virginia makes very savoury wines. And once you get that into your head, you can appreciate the wines in a far more deep way because they're not juicy fruited. Um, they're bright, but they're not juicy fruited kind of sweet things. They're really savoury and spicy and almost herbal and engaging and delicious and awesome. Um, and that's what this wine is. So if you haven't been introduced to the Black Label range with Vass Felix, I'd highly recommend it. They're really exciting um, and quite boundary pushing. Um, you know, there's in the past there's been carbonic maceration and foot stomping and skin contact and alternate vessels. And she did a, I'm pretty sure she did cab mat, Cabernet one year, like just crazy stuff, but really exciting and, and awesome. So in the final glass is a um, wine that you may have heard of. It's Flame Tree. This is their SRS Warcliffe Chardonnay. Cliff um, makes a really flinty, funky, layered, quite intense Chardonnay. And I think on release, they can be sort of polarizing because if you're not ready for that style, it can really set you back. There's a lot going on um, aromatically and in the mouth as well. Now, um, this is from the southern Wallcliffe area. So as discussed, Wallcliffe here, Wallcliffe here, and Rosa Glen's not far from Wallcliffe. Um, Gingin clone, whole bunch pressed um, to French oak, wild firm, and of course, high turbidity juice. So that means lots of solids in the juice, no malo, no stirring, um, and matured in 40% new French oak for nine months. As I say, on release, these wines can be really big, and looking at them in a um, in a lineup at a wine show, you can almost always pick the flame tree style because it's quite um, overt, but it's really spicy and he does it really, really well. And what we have here is a wine that is now three years old um, and I think that it benefits from the extra time in bottle. So all of those funky sulfide characters have really entrenched themselves into the wine and what we see is more of a rise of salted peach and there's some pineapple, but this is tight. I mean, this is 13% alcohol, so there's, this is not a ripe wine. This is a, a taut, tense wine, and as discussed, 2019 was obviously a cool year. It's salty and layered and complex, and I look for saltiness in the wines. Interestingly, um, no malo or batonage would lead me to think that the wine would have more um, tension than this does. This has actually got a really beautiful creamy kind of a base. Like the, the fruit is like peach, a peach essence sort of character in the base. And it, it's a really wonderful counterpoint to the spice that sits above it, the winemaking and the acid that flows through it, which is salty. So 
Yeah, Margaret River is really varied in its vineyard sourcing and vineyard areas. And each, like, you know, Carradale, Wallcliffe, Carbonat, Treaton, Willie Abrupt, these are all distinct areas that have their own distinct expression of fruit. Um, but what I can say is the power of the fruit here and the density of flavour in the mouth and the acid, these wines are um, world class and they make me proud to be an Australian because what we can offer the rest of the world of Chardonnay drinkers is immense. Um, and when you look at these wines ranging from sort of $40, $45 through to $120, there's just wonderful value to be had here. So bottoms up. <laughs>